we've made it to our next capital city. We're off to the info centre. So they've got a pretty good info centre here, right in front of Parliament. Let's go find out what to do in the Northern Territory. We've been into the Darwin Information Centre and grabbed a heap of brochures. There's lots happening over the school holidays too, which is a bonus for being here at this time of year. Yes, things will be busier, but there's more happening in town that we can access. So we're going to go home and go through our brochures and decide what to do for the week. This has to be the best water park this side of Australia. It's amazing and to believe that it's free, we've got the pool, the kids are over on the big water slides, which I did as well. And this one over here. Awesome. Totally free in Darwin. There's a number of these. Unreal way to spend the day. Yeah. Yeah, hey, what are we doing? We're going on the water park. We're going on the water park. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. Have you been on this before? Yeah, I've done it. How was it? What do you recommend? Get in there. Launched me. That's the one launched me. That was not made for a dog. Oh, I'm on that one. Gonna go on that? We're gonna go on the big one? No. Yeah. Have a look behind me up there. Wow. kids are having a movie night tonight so we've got these Austral sky gazer tents and we've set them up with a tarp screen in front and a little portable projector we run and the boys can sit in here and watch a movie with a speaker without the need for power that's pretty cool the adults what we do is we run a little uh, citronella burner or candle with our wind deflector around it so it looks a little bit like a campfire but it's actually just a burner and that does a great job, give you a bit of atmosphere. It doesn't help with the warmth, but uh, not too bad in a balmy Darwin night. This is Robbie Robbins Reserve. So we camped up here, there's toilets, free washing machines. This is super cheap. We're around 20 odd dollars a night here in Darwin. So we're not far out of the city, about a 10, 15 minute drive. It's pretty packed out, but a little space you get. This is Parliament House in the Northern Territory. It's Wednesday today and they do free tours at 10.30 on a Wednesday of Parliament House. So we're going to go in and have a look at what's in Parliament House and hopefully the boys can learn a little bit about government. What is in Parliament House? What is in Parliament House, Harry? Let's go and find out. Parliament. We're one of the only parliaments in Australia to have always had Aboriginal representation um, and we are also quite proud of our female representation in Parliament. Northern Territory Legislative Assembly first sat in 1974 and it was a big deal allowing the Territory to start its own self-government with a catch. So this site here was where the first uh, building, a European building, was created here in the Northern Territory and it was the Telegraphic and Postal Facility. Now that was built here in 1871 but it wasn't until much later that the bombing raids occurred and in 1942 the office was destroyed by bombing and uh, a number of people stayed behind trying to keep the connections open between Northern Territory, Australia and the rest of the world. This is the remains of the original telegraph station that was bombed and um, They've included this as part of the library. Let me go out onto the speaker's green and check it out from the outside. This is the speaker's green outside. Beautiful view. Even a cafe over there, you can come and check it out. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the Northern Territory Parliament and the government sit on the left, although they currently spill over to the right a little bit, the opposition on the right. This is Charlie the Crocodile, who's only been here since 2016, but he is on loan from Crocodilus Crocodile Park. And the speaker sits up the top. We have clerks across the front. And the whole idea here is that all the laws are discussed. Everything that is discussed in Parliament actually ultimately gets put into one of these books. So this is a complete parliamentary record of the Northern Territory Parliament. And um, at any point, any of the members can go back and look at what was discussed. And usually the day's commentary and discussions are tabled by 10 p.m. by people who record everything that's said pretty cool and a good learning experience. It's Wednesday afternoon and we're off to the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory. Free entry. How's that for a bonus? Raptors. Butterflies. This is Sweetheart, the Salty. Oh my gosh, you would not want to come across him. He died in 1979 after a series of boat attacks. So this is a tribute to him. He was the dominant male crocodile on his waterway. He was number one and that's why he was defending his patch. Number 22 is called Saratoga. Where's that one? Just here. Just here, it's like a fish. And what's number 20? It's a turtle. Number 20 is a spangled grunter okay, type turtle. of turtle. Well, oh, he's number 12. Number 30. Number 30. He's a northern snake necked turtle, this one. He's number 12, not 20. No, number, no, number 30 now. There's no number 30, is there 13? Yep, 13. 13 is a saltwater crocodile. Yep. It's wow. salty. He looks What's friendly, doesn't he? 15? watched our broom video, you would have seen footprints that looked very similar to what we're seeing here. And this is the Miocene, which was a bird-like animal, a giant bird-like animal that used to roam Australia at a time of billabongs and wetlands. And this could very well be the, the I guess, the skeleton of what we found traces of all around broom. It's pretty cool and a good thing to loop back for the kids. I'm going to go check out about Cyclone Tracy. In 1974, Christmas Eve, Darwin was destroyed by a cyclone. Everything was flattened. It was massive. This is a structure that was completely destroyed by Cyclone Tracy. Wow. Look at that. That is Darwin before Cyclone Tracy, and this is just after. Utter devastation, just gone. And you see some of the houses that went in the direct path, but when you actually look in and they're missing their roofs, look at all the damage, everything just spread out. And that's on Christmas Eve, and everyone's you know in a celebratory mood, off work, and then bam, it all happened. So this exhibit is showing the architecture in Darwin and how that's changed since Cyclone Tracy. How the houses were built before the cyclone when they'd never really experienced something that bad before. There was all of this glass in the walls, which was great to let the breeze in in such a hot climate, but not so great for a cyclone. Imagine the looting when people were evacuated and it was 36,000 people left. Some people stayed behind. Everyone started looting to get supplies, tools, materials. So it became quite a dangerous place to be. Not just because of, you know, the danger of people coming to your home, but disease as well. So after Cyclone Tracy, there was a new code adopted called the Cyclone Code that dictated how buildings needed to be built to be more resistant to cyclones in the future. 
kids are just looking at those who just were deceased from Cyclone Tracy. So it was around 60 to 70 people that actually died from a population of 48,000. They were very lucky, but a lot of them were actually in boats. So a lot of boats out at sea copped it worse. So HMAS Arrow, the Darwin Princess, and the Booyah were all out at sea and people died out at sea, not expecting the cyclone to strike. So making a connection to our pearl farm experience a few weeks ago showing how buttons have been made out of the pearling shell and then the helmet that the workers would wear to collect the pearls off the bed of the ocean. This is the maritime section of the museum. So there's actually four boats there. The kids are headed down the steps so that they can go and explore them. Saltwater crock. Darwin is a really complex place in Northern Territory as a whole. Northern Territory was run by New South Wales and it was um, basically neglected and so it was handed over to the South Australian administrators. South Australia went up and tried to do what they could but then they fell behind as well and then ultimately it fell to the Commonwealth to try to colonise Northern Territory. The concern was that there wasn't enough of European settlers in the Northern Territory. The number one population were the Aboriginals, there were heaps of Chinese but there just wasn't enough of the white minority so the government saw this is a problem. All the government jobs were run by white people and as a result all the laws, all the decision making went against the Aborigines and the Chinese who were the top two populations in and around the area. So over a long time everything done in the Northern Territory went against the Aboriginal people, went against the Chinese. The Chinese were even deported eventually cutting down their numbers and ultimately that's why today Northern Territory is still a territory. It was never its own state. It didn't even have voting rights in a federal parliament until not long ago. So it's a really complex place and one that has been sparsely populated for a long long time. So we're going in to learn about the Royal Flying Doctor Service but there's also a special exhibition on the bombing of Darwin Harbour. So you come down here onto Stokes Wharf, right over the water, we're going to learn all about it. Let's take a look on board the Royal Flying Doctor Service plane, Al. Lucky you didn't need this a few weeks ago, buddy. Here with the patient bay and here. Yep. Oh, room for how many patients are there? Two. Two patients. Here you hop on and be a patient, Harry. Hop all the way back. Oh, then they put a belt onto you. I broke my bone. You broke a bone? Which bone did you break? My head. Your head, bone. Your skull. Oh, that's not good news. Jed, what's wrong with you? I don't know yet. You're not sure yet? Are you unconscious? Yeah. <laughs> you're unconscious, so you're not sure what's wrong with you. Well, we better put the belt on you. There's the current Royal Flying Doctor Service flights going around Australia. So there's all these planes up in the air. We have a range of virtual reality here at the Royal Flying Doctor Service. So we're going to put these goggles on. It actually wasn't working. I've just reset it and uh, we're going to give it a go and see what happens. Let's go. All right, Al, where are you going? Um, patient experience or pilot experience? Which one should I do? It's up to you. You want to be a pilot? I'm co-pilot seat and I'm looking at the pilot. Mount Zeal is just there. Mount Zeal? No, that's not just there, that's the wall. No, it's <laughs> not. Mount Zeal is the wall. 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 Mount Zeal is <laughs> There's no one there. <laughs> people down there. So I just finished the virtual reality. I was both a patient and the pilot. So the pilot could see outside the windows, which was some pretty cool views as he flew the plane. And the patient was lying down in the bed being treated. Some of the artwork here of the bombing of Darwin. 
1942, the Battle of Darwin commenced and Japan, with 242 planes across two major raids, attacked the harbour, destroying ships, buildings, and basically saying to Australia, don't join the war effort, and also trying to stop the Allies, the US, Britain, using Australia as a base to retaliate to Japan. They were based off in the Timor Sea, and then attacked with multiple planes coming in, attacking and destroying as much as they can of this Darwin city. We're out the Mindel Markets, it's four o'clock. I think this is a good time to arrive actually because it's pretty quiet, the stalls have just opened, so I think we're gonna get our rounds of the market done and then go and enjoy the sunset. Harry's oh, picking up a crystal. It's a thunder jump, Harry. <laughs> That's it. Never a shop that was going to get our kids sucked in, it was the magic shop. Okay, hold out your arm. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, ten. Nine, your cards are nine. Nine, and it's going to be uh, nine of club hearts, wait, double club hearts. Nine of hearts. Special sunset just with uh, 10,000 of our friends. Have a look at this. Apparently, the only place in the Northern Territory you can see the sun go down. It's crazy. My uh, favourite part of the night was the applause broke out across the crowd because this is the only time in the Northern Territory that the sun sets. <laughs> at least today. At least we got We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> The sun's set, but the market's still going, <laughs> so we're heading in for round two. Become a night market now. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going into the Crocosaurus Cove. Crocosaurus Cove is actually right in the middle of the city, which seems a little weird when you're parking in the middle of the city and then you're walking in to see these crocs, so hopefully there's no crocs escaping onto the city streets. Alright, this is our first salty experience. I do not want to come across him in the, in the wild. What does he feel like, Al? Soft. I'm not sure what to do. There is there's stuff everywhere and he's jumping around like it's Christmas. They are everywhere. Up top. And he's gone. Harry's concerned that there's a crocodile. And what's over here? Who's hiding for his life behind a rock. Probably a good spot to hang out, mate. Good luck. Good luck with flies. Oh, there's another one over the back. See a fresh or salty, Harry? This is the world's most venomous snake. Oh, what is it? It's the... Taipan. Taipan. You do not want to be bitten by this guy. The cycle for crocodiles, starting off as eggs and then forming into embryos. Depending on the temperature, if it's 31 to 32 degrees, they'll be male. When they come out as hatchlings, they've got enough yolk for about a month without food, and that'll be in their belly, and then they'll start catching frogs, insects, little fish, things like that as they start to grow. As juveniles, they'll stay together, and they'll hunt together. If they get in any trouble, they'll make a distress sound, and an adult will come and save them, but generally they'll stay around their mum, and then ultimately become these big, scary-ass adults, which are absolute machines and very dangerous where you can swim with the crocs so you can get into this pool here there's a pool gate go down and then just over the water is where all the crocs are cruising around kids in a pool cage Alex 
Oops is helping to set up the light force machine. Fish for crocs here. I'm gonna go out and check it out. Did he get it? Yeah, heaps there, Jed. He got it. Palmerston Water Park today and the boys are up top and they're about to come racing down the slide so we're going to try to catch them. Here they come. Yeah. Steph's lined up for her turn waiting for some of these uh, boards to come down, the mats. Yeah. And there she goes. Here we go, last ride for the day. Hi! Harry! They have had so much fun riding up and down this slide. So we got our first infringement of the trip. Ridiculous. So we just pulled into a car park in Darwin, everything's really close in Darwin, super close. So we just bought a ticket, put in a couple of dollars, bought our ticket, which we thought was valid, and then realised we were parked in the wrong spot. So we, we, we realised we were parked in the wrong spot, so we got back in the car and moved to what was the right spot, which is also you know, a paid parking area. So we thought, well, we just bought our ticket, so we don't need to buy another ticket. Still valid, looked at the ticket, there was no rules or anything on it, and parked. We ran in and got ice cream, spent a heap of money on ice cream, which is ridiculous. Um, but you do that as a tourist, came out and we've got a parking ticket. So this parking ticket um, was stuck to the dash. I thought, what is going on here? Because I've got a valid ticket. And I read it, couldn't see anything wrong with it. And then out of the corner of my eye in my mirror, I saw the parking ticket inspector just watching, probably giggling. Um, and so I got out and went over to him. I didn't approach him aggressively. I just went over and said, mate, what's the go? I've got a valid ticket and give me a fine. And it turns out in Darwin, when you come down to the waterfront area, that is private property, not city property. And as a result, they have different parking fees. And so although we had a city valid park parking ticket, which gave us parking in the city, which we'd rightfully paid for, we hadn't paid for the private parking. 200 metres down the road. 200 metres down the road. Now the thing with that is, they've got a really tiny sign in tiny red print that says City ticket's not valid here, but it was over near the um, near the pay station in like the world's smallest signage. So we didn't see that because we didn't need to go near there. And um, as a result, we got a fine. So we're going to challenge it because it seems unfair on tourists. Hey boys, we're looking spunky. Mm -hmm. Look at our mohawk, Harry. We are going to the Rodeo. Oh, and you, you've got one too. The Rodeo We're rodeo. going. Oh, well, Rodeo or Rodeo? I go Rodeo. We're here in Darwin, as you know, and while we were here, we posted up on Instagram that we're in Darwin looking for things to do, and uh, two of our followers, Poppy and Jeff, got in touch and said that the Rodeo is something absolutely worth going to, and if we wanted to, we could come along with them because they're actually a sponsor for the event. So we were really um, lucky with that and really appreciate it. So hi to Jeff and Poppy. And um, we're going to go along and have a night out with them and go see the rodeo, rodeo, whatever you want to say. We're going to go oh. see some bull riding. Oh.
guys, for Alex to go around the truck throwing out lollies. He's just been taken down and he's about to get to go out riding around the rodeo, giving away stuff. This place is crazy. Dead set crazy. It is unreal. Everything's going off. Alex! party boat. We've got a bin, we've got a Nesky on the front, all the chairs, Matt's driving, we've got a barbecue, Chrissy's washing dishes, just like know, at home. Like what a home. crap holiday. <laughs> and then round the back, looking out the back, Stormy's watching out the back for sharks. You see any sharks? No. Nah. Alright, we're going to go up, up the steps. Hudson! Why? They're kids, not monsters. Look at this. This is the upstairs level of Marie. Two crocs. Did it? Yeah. Wow. As so I look at this. So this is the Crobbery Billabong. Mary River National Park. It's pretty, hey Jeff? We just left. This is a really pretty billabong. You've got the lily pads lining both sides of the billabong, the reeds. It's just really, really stunning. The morning sun as well creates a beautiful atmosphere. It was a little chilly when we arrived here, so something warm or just an extra layer might help in the morning. But look at that, it's so worth it. Hope we see lots of animals today. Got a jabberoo up there on the bank. <laughs> and a white striped reeded bird, according to Matt. Technical name. <laughs> Maybe you got your fishing shirt on. Keep the mozzies off too, eh? 
We're cooking for 20 people today. We've got Whoa. eggs, bacon. Everyone's got rolls. Easy nice. way to feed everybody. just coming up out of the water there. He was up, then he went down. You could see by the ripples and the bubbles where he was going. Now he's up again. He's looking for some sun. We're just spotting crocs, so there's one over here. Big one just down there. You can just see him through the gap. We'll back it up and see if we can see him. He doesn't seem to be bothered by us. This is what happens when you get a big one. We're all on the front, left-hand quadrant. On the boat, we're about to go down. Thanks, Darwin. We'll be back another time.